Well, if you fell asleep at the half, you didn't miss much. Exactly where we found it through 30 is where we find it through 60. 24 to 7 with no points to show in the second half. You had the under cash it as the Eagles take down the Vikings to move to 2 and 0 behind a stellar effort from Jalen Hurts, specifically in the first half. And then let's call it managing the game in the second. 26 to 31, 333 through the air, another 57 on the ground, three total touchdowns. Did have an INT, but. If you look at the tape, it's not one that goes to his name, and it's his first turnover of the season, something that plagued Hurts in seasons past. As for Kirk Cousins and his struggles in prime time, well, here's another data point. Cousins, no good, three INTs, and it could have been even more. All right, let's get into it with the two-time Super Bowl champ, Bryant McFadden, BMAC. Interesting ball game here. Most of our analysis could probably be done in the first 30 minutes of the game, but we're going to get to it all. And, you know, opinions of players change on a game-by-game -game basis. How has your opinion of Jalen Hurts changed over the first 120 minutes of this season? Oh, man, he's, he's been on fire. Any questions you had in regards to Jalen Hurts, can he lead this team uh, uh, in, in a good direction? Can he provide franchise quarter, uh, quarterback-like production? He's answering them. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And one thing I like about the storyline for their game plan offensively, if you watch the first few plays in the first quarter, they came out uh, five wide, mm -hmm. no huddle. And they just put the ball in Jalen Hurts' hands. And then, of course, he made things happen with his legs. So they believe that he has more than enough to get the job done. And they were able to showcase that in the beginning of this ball game, understanding they're playing against a pretty good team that has playoff aspirations. And they wanted to show everyone who was watching that Jalen Hurts is not just a do-it-all quarterback. He's a franchise-like quarterback right now. Yeah, it was Hurts in the offense in the first half. The defense bowing up in the second. Darius Slay with two INTs and limiting Justin Jefferson, what many believe to be the best receiver in the league right now to six receptions, 48 yards, BMAC. Speak to the performance here by uh, big play Slay, coming away with a couple big plays and big moments. Man, I think Slay, you said two interceptions, but what about the ones he missed? Mm. Four PBUs, uh, he played with a lot of energy. And this, th this game was big. It seemed like the Philadelphia Eagles played with a sense of urgency the Vikings didn't have. It seemed like they were well prepared, but they attacked this ball game, Joe, like it was a playoff game. And because of that, we saw stellar play from everyone, including big play Darius Slade, one of the best to do it, been doing it for a long, long time, hasn't lost the stuff at all. Uh, this was a huge opportunity for him to showcase what type of corner he is, playing against the wide receiver who we all believe is one of the best in the league and, and doing what he does. And in this first meeting, not saying that these two teams will play in the regular season, but who knows what can happen in the playoffs. Darius Slay won it. Uh, mental edge, physical edge here on the field as well. Uh, let's go big picture here on the Eagles defense, who looked far more assertive than what we saw against Detroit in week one. Outside of Slay, where did you see this unit maybe more productive here in week two? I mean, they, they did a great job in collapsing the pocket. They did a great job in creating turnovers. Uh, Kirk Cousins... It's every time there was a window of opportunity for the Minnesota Vikings, we saw a blocked field goal, we saw an interception. Guess what? The Philadelphia Eagles defense made Kirk Cousins turn the football right back over. Three interceptions that were all major in interceptions. When you look at the place where these interceptions happened at, they were right out outside of the red zone. They were basically in scoring in, in a scoring opportunity, had a scoring opportunity. This was another huge play right here on the post route, right there. They had an opportunity to put points on the scoreboard, but came away with nothing because of the turnovers. If this defense can continue to play that way, my goodness, lights out, lights out, especially within their division alone. But they had, it was a total complete team effort. One of the best ball games I've seen from Philadelphia Eagles as a team in quite some time. And they were able to do so on the national stage. Yeah, it was uh, the national stage, and it's one that Kirk Cousins has uh, struggled on in the past. Just when you think he's bucking that trend, two straight wins in primetime on Monday night. Not the case here on this given Monday. Now 2-10 and ten on Monday night football. It, it flat out wasn't good when it comes to Captain Kirk in this game, BMAC. When you take a look at what he was able to accomplish week one and some of the struggles and inefficiencies in week two, which one is closer to the real Kirk Cousins? The guy we saw in week one or the guy we saw here on Monday night? 
Uh, the guy we saw in week one, uh, Kirk Cousins is more than a serviceable quarterback. He's a guy you can win ball games with. He's a guy that can get you into the playoffs. I just didn't like the game plan. Mm-hmm. Joe, we, I, I talked about the mindset for the Eagles offensively. They came out firing. They came out with an aggressive tone. I just didn't like what I saw from Minnesota. Even after the first initial scoring drive from Philly, they came out very, very generic. It wasn't – the sense of urgency wasn't there. You have Dalvin Cook. You have Adam Thielen. You have Justin Jefferson. You got guys that can make things happen. Be more aggressive. And I just didn't like the game plan offensively for the Minnesota Vikings the entire time. And because of that, we didn't see the production that we thought we would see. Uh, BMAC, you speak to some of the offensive ability of this Eagles team right now, and they weren't big play drives. They were methodical. Uh, They were well put together. We're talking about drives, uh, 11 plays, 82 yards, touchdown. Seven plays, 82 yards, touchdown. Seven plays, 85 yards, touchdown. Eight plays, 75 yards, field goal. This is an offense that is methodically working their way down the field. What does that tell you about the maturation process, not just of the quarterback, but as this unit as they come together? Uh, They can score in many different ways. The thing that I like about Philly, if you look at what they did last year, they can run the football. But now they're throwing the football extremely well because their quarterback is playing with so much confidence. So if they need to go, if they need to go about their business the hard way, they don't mind doing so. Most offenses, they don't have the patience to do that. But that's who the Philadelphia Eagles, that's who they are as a ball club. Offensively, like you said, they can go the length of the football field while, while utilizing the clock. And if you mess up in the back end, they can hit you with a big play as well because they have those type of players on their offense. They're very, very balanced. And when you look at the NFC right now, not just the NFC East, because of course we will all say the Eagles, they're the best team in the division. But when you look at the entire NFC right now, I mean, Philly, they got to be a top three team in the NFC easily right mm-hmm. now. Uh, That is how they stack up through two games. We'll see what they got out in front of them. Can't go without mentioning, though, here, a silver lining uh, for both you and the podcast. P2 getting his hand on one. Uh, Great stuff here from your cousin and our colleague. It does come in a loss as the Eagles move to 2-0. The Vikings now 1-1. BMAC, we appreciate you. All right, here's a look at that road ahead for both of these sides. For the Vikes, maybe a get right against the Lions, but the Lions were a tough out in week one for these very Eagles. So we'll see how that plays out in Minnesota. Then it's a week four meeting with the Saints in London. Anything can happen when you put them on a long flight. And then it's the Bears back in the division in week five for the Eagles. Maybe a bit of a handshake here with the Commanders in the division. Again, anything can happen. The Jags look far better in week two than they did in week one. That'll be their week four meeting. Then it's the Cards in week five. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.